vice, violence and explicit content. Director Abel Ferrara has never shied away from the seedier aspects of society throughout his career. From 1990s gangster thriller King of New York... How come you never came to see me? Who wanted to see you in a cage, man? No one can kill me. I'm blessed. To the critically acclaimed Bad Lieutenant in 1992, right up to the somber and nuanced Pasolini about the last days of the murdered Italian director. Ferrara has worked with respected actors Harvey Keitel, Christopher Walken, Willem Dafoe and Gérard Depardieu. Now he's passing on his film industry experience to a new generation. Big one. Action. Okay. Abel Ferrara, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. You're at the Champs-Élysées Film Festival here in Paris as part of the masterclass sessions. You yourself went to film school. What was the most important lesson you learned there? Well, I didn't learn it, but I mean, the most important thing I think I've learned from film school is, um, you know, listen and learn, you know? Keep your ears open, keep your eyes open, and uh, don't come with an attitude. You know, I should go to film school now. Well, the festival... It's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, okay. The festival bills itself as a celebration of independent cinema. Right. How would you judge the state of uh, American independent cinema right now? Well, I'm not there, so that says one thing about it. It's always the same. You want to do your thing, you got to do your thing, and then and, and you got to deal with the obstacles. You know, they're constantly changing. The way people look at films constantly changes. The way you make films constantly changes. Now, going back to a little earlier in your career, I'm thinking of films like Bad Lieutenant, King of New York. These films depict a, a world of vice and violence. Is that a very specific critique of a certain kind of society? I mean, th those two films were made in kind of specific era in uh, New York, especially Bad Lieutenant, 92, I guess, 93. You know, it was, it was pretty violent. You know, it was kind of a crack epidemic. It, it was like a certain kind of violence you know, that might, um, might have tipped off, you know, influenced the way we were doing. Lifestyle we were living wasn't, you know, the healthiest either. From here on, nothing goes down unless I'm involved. No blackjack, no dope deals, no nothing. we are waiting years for this. Now, you left the US, you left your native New York yeah. to come and live in Europe. What is it that you no. like about the uh, old continent? Or, you know, I mean, uh, again, I'm just taking a world view on the whole deal, you know, with the internet and with just my uh, observation, you know, when I go places, it doesn't seem like you're really crossing state lines or country lines, you know, in a way, especially in terms of the cinema, you know, because films basically have a language of their own, which is not the language of a country. So I think it's more of a melting pot for people. But um, I'm living in Rome. Uh, you know, I met a girl. I, you know, I have a new baby. I'm, I'm kind of there now. You know, I went there to shoot this film. But we've been, we've been back and forth between Rome and the United States for the last 12 years. So. Now, going to some of the characters in your films, I get the idea that some of them seem to have been corrupted by either power or money. I'm thinking of people like Ray in The Funeral or Devereaux in Welcome to New York. Do you think it's possible to be wealthy and powerful and maintain your integrity? Why not, you know? Why not? Even in politics? Especially in politics. I mean, that's where you gotta come with integrity. You know, you're gonna position yourself as someone who's gonna be the ruler of, you know, the people. You know, you better bring that card, you know, compassion. Integrity, you know, that's, that's what else you're selling as a politician. Politics and power are key themes in his film, Welcome to New York. It was inspired by former IMF director Dominique Strauss-Kahn, who found himself embroiled in accusations of sexual assault in 2011. The main characters played by Gérard Depardieu. You know who I am. Yeah, why do you do all this f***ing? 
But what do you prefer, play golf? The film was shown unofficially during the Cannes Film Festival in 2014. It sparked so much controversy, it didn't even get a theatrical release. And it's since caused legal headaches for the director, who's been advised not to comment on the film. Is it worth that journey? Now, you've worked with one of France's best-known actors, Gérard Depardieu. His legend yeah. precedes him here yeah. in France. How did you find working with him as an actor? You know, he's the real deal for me. You know, he's what I expect and, and what, you know, you hope for, what, what you want. You know, he brings it all, you know. He's got the smarts, he's got the... He's got, you know, sublime talent, you know. I mean, he's got just a something. And he's a... And he's a a really good guy, you know, and, he, and, he, um, and he's very inspirational in terms of his energy and his love for the films, you know what I mean? So anyway, I learned a lot. It was really, really, we all love working with him a lot. And I hope we work with him again. I'll do a film with him called, about, called um, kind of like King Lear as a starting point. Now, in 2014, you made a film about Pier Paolo Pasolini, right. uh, the late Italian writer and film director. Yeah. What, what is it about Pasolini that grabs you? Know, you know, okay, what is it about Pasolini that grabs me? I mean, his movies in the beginning, the first, my first interaction with I mean, I never met the guy, but, you know, his movies started with his movies. They were, um, you know, it's one of these guys who make earth-shaking movies, you know? I mean, it's the kind of film that, you know, we were students seeing those movies for the first time, seeing them for the second time, seeing them even lately, you know, later in life. They're still, they never, you know, they're always special, all of them. You know, then we got into the writing and then the political commentary and his, you know. And then in the end, with the film, we got into um, really who he was in terms of meeting a lot of the people that work with him and live with him and his family. and. Uh, you know, he's incredible, larger than life character, man. Now, Pasolini is somebody who had his films censored in the 60s and They're 70s. Still are, they? But Salome is still censored. Indeed. And what do you think has changed, if anything, for artists in that respect? Are you freer now? You're as free as you want to be, you know. Am I free making films? I'm, you know, I'm going to, you know... That I'm not giving up, you know, so... It's a state of mind, you know. Pasolini, there was, he, there was no unfreedom for him. He wasn't worried about censorship. He wasn't worried. I mean, it just didn't exist for him. We learned from those guys. You know, you, you, you know, you're shooting from your heart. You're shooting from your mind. You, the idea of what gets shown on Amazon, what's R-rated, what's this, what, you know, it's like not part of the equation. You've said publicly that you've stopped using drugs and you right. feel better for that. Yeah. How has it affected your filmmaking? Oh, uh, that's a good question. How does it affect me? Well, it affects the people that are working with me while I'm making the films. You know, affects my ability just to be where I got to be and, and to, you know, connect. But, um, yeah, for me, losing the delusion of um, that drugs and alcohol, or that I needed it, that I needed it. You know, I needed those two things, you know. Just, um, you know, it was a great revelation. I'm sorry it took so long, but I'm not, you know, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but, you know, my advice to all my junkie brothers out there is really try it without it. Give it a, give it a try really straight, really sober, you know, for a while. 40 days and be totally clean and then, and then decide if this is, you know, yeah, I'm sorry. These, we're trying to raise money, guys, so, you know, every phone call, every phone call counts. Yeah. You said you can't shut the phones off you know, when you're financing films. <laughs> Not today. Again. You've said in the past that filmmaking is your personal therapy. Why is that? You know, it's what I do. It's my life. It's, it's you know, yeah, I could say it's therapy, you know. I mean, we love doing it, you know. I mean, it's the way we, we, we you know, we support our family. We support the people around us, you know. 
It's how we we express ourselves. It's how we, you know, it's our self-expression. What about for us watching the films? Can cinema yeah, or bad art? For you. No. <laughs> no, but seriously, can art provide a therapeutic service or a spiritual service? Spiritual, it better. I mean, what else is it going to do? I mean, why else are you doing it? You know, trying to make a spiritual connection with yourself or somebody else, right? Now, your most recent film, which is being screened here in Paris, yeah. focuses on the life of Padre Pio. That's an Italian priest. Yeah, it's a priest. documentary show about Padre Pio. He was canonized in, in real life. Yep. Welcome to New York. He's a saint. Good. Was inspired by real facts. Right. And Pasolini, of course, was a biopic. Yeah. You seem to have got interested recently in factual content. I mean, at least as a starting point, these films are all theatrical. Padre Pio's a, a documentary, but his life was so theatrical, you know. Um, and it's also, we're, we're working on a, a feature, you know, so the documentary is basically the research on, on, this, on the film we're gonna make. And how different is your approach when you're working with documentary material and fiction? You know, when somebody gets in front of a camera, whether they're in, in this situation or acting, I mean, it's, what's the difference, you know? I mean, we're all acting right now, right? I mean, the camera's on, you know, you're playing the interviewer, I'm playing the interviewee, right, you know? Can you tell us a little bit about your upcoming projects? Siberia with um, Willem. Um, we can do a film with this time, you know, Willem is playing Willem. So the, the investigation is a, about, is on him. But a lot of nature, a lot of, a little crazy for us, you know. Jack London, snow, animals, <laughs> dog sleds again. I look forward to it. Abel Ferrara, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, man. I, thank you very much, really. Desolate, cold, snow on ground, a few bare trees. For the moment, the snow is stopped and the sun, however faint, is shining. A lone Eskimo coming over the hill on snowshoes. Dogs begin to bark. 